Good morning, everyone. Can you believe that it's a new year? I sure can't. 2024. It will only take me about three months to write that correctly on my checks because I do still write checks. So it'll take a while, but we'll eventually get there um, as we move into um, a new year of life. So let us begin this new year as we have in the past um, in God's good word and in prayer and mutual conversation and consolation. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. Well, I don't have the fancy thing to share on the screen today, but we are continuing with, um, it was our Advent devotion, but it's kind of going to be coming Christmas and Epiphany devotion. Today we are in the clothed in shame. What a lovely way to begin the year, but let's be where we're at. Um, our scripture is Psalm 35, 26. Let them be put to shame and disappointed altogether who rejoice at my calamity. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves against me. Is David asking God to punish his enemies with all the typical cultural trappings? Shunning embarrassment. Of, of our modern age in Psalm 35. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor, reads like a modern cancel culture insult, and is not the only type time this type of language is used in the Old Testament. In Psalm 109, David makes a similar request. May my accusers be clothed with dishonor. May they be wrapped in their own shame as in a cloak. And prophet Micah likewise reflects. Then my enemy will see and shame will cover her with who said to me, where is the Lord your God? The Old Testament mentions being clothed with shame, disgrace, etc. at least 10 times. And yet it would seem that almost every other entry in this Advent devotional reflects on the idea that our God promises coverings and clothing of righteousness and honor, not shame. What is going on here? God's beloved are not in danger of receiving the opposite of the wardrobe worn by King Jesus. But apart from our King, this is the outfit we already wear. Yes, it's David who first spoke these words, but it's to Christ we attribute them. And as Christ's words, we must interpret enemy as all of us who justly deserve shame and dishonor for magnifying ourselves against him. Those in opposition to the Savior, by definition, dress differently. The only option available to them is the garb of shame-stained rags. But you, dear Christian, are no longer among the shamed. For while we were still sinners and enemies to God, the King of Kings died for us. This is at once both a shaming fact and the one filled with absolute freedom. While we deserve all the shame and disgrace of God's enemies solely by his gracious love, our Heavenly Father has brought you close and clothed you in the majesty of his Son. Romans 5.10 Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise that, you, that even though we are enemies clothed by the disgrace of our shame, we have given, you have chosen to give us a new wardrobe of salvation and righteousness. Well, let's start with the disciples. The disciples, um, you know, simple fishermen walking along with Jesus. He washes their feet. So we know they have clean feet. Um, 
And then we know that they abandon him. We know that they betrayed him. We know that they leave him um, in this hour of greatest need to save their own skins out of fear of the authorities, of, of fear of what could happen. Um, Peter says that he would never abandon and he, by the time the cock crows three times, he is three times been, have been, um, he has denied Christ three times. He is clothed in his shame. We know that they feel shame and fear because they are in a locked room after the resurrection, after the death. They are hidden away. Um, they are scared. They are ashamed. They are um, in fear for what they have done for the three years of ministry that has ended for um, their actions, the, how they did not understand how everything they hoped um, for had died with Christ. And even when the resurrection news came to them, they did not believe, especially in the book of Mark, of course, um, until that word is preached to them. They are clothed in their shame. They are hidden. Um, they are wrapped in it. They are tightening it like a cardigan. Like my kids make fun of me how when I wear these, I you know wrap around. Um, you wrap yourself in it. You nestle in tighter. You hold it close to you. They were doing this. And what Christ did was came into the upper room and that locked room and he breathed on them and he said, peace be with you. And he unbound them as he had been unbound from the bounds of death, um, the bands wrapping his body in the tomb. He unbound them from their shame. The, the, that, that that they had wrapped around themselves, that the, which had been draped upon them and they clutched onto, that it was clinging to them. And he gave them his righteousness. He gave them his blessedness. He clothed them in his glory, taking from them their shame. So what does that mean for you and me? Our world is so good at making us feel ashamed. Ashamed that we um, don't understand technology. <laughs> All of us are there, um, including my husband and I as we're learning our new phones. It's not always intuitive. And it feels like we should know. And so we could add some shame and um, ashamed that we couldn't figure out how to um, advocate for ourselves. Ashamed that we, we told a lie. Ashamed that we um, didn't get everything done for Christmas. Ashamed that it wasn't the Christmas we wanted for our family or ourselves. Ashamed that 2023 was what it was or we don't want, we don't know what we want to do this year. Ashamed at the little and the big. Ashamed that our house is messy. Ashamed that um, we have to ask for help. Ashamed that our body is failing us. Ashamed for what we've done and left undone, what's been done to us. It drapes upon us and clings to us. And it starts to become um, like a second skin to us. It um, it wraps around us and we wrap it around ourselves. And in part, because this is what we do continually, this is what we know. Um, it's the anxiety that keeps us up at night or in the morning wakes us up worried about what we'll do. It's the tension um, that we don't know how to resolve. Shame is something is saying, um, Brene Brown talks about how guilt is, um, I feel bad for what I did. And shame is, um, I feel bad for who I, what I am or who I am. It's more intrinsic of there's something wrong with me that I can't get it right. There's something wrong with me that I keep on choosing these things. There's something wrong with me. And that's why these things are happening to me. And we are all fallen. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. We all have been a disappointment. We all are bound to choices that we cannot free ourselves from. Um, it's not a, a warm cardigan. <laughs> it's a um, self-preservation or lack of energy or lack of hope that things can get better. And that leaves us um, in either inaction or 
hustling so that we can find place in the world. Um, it dishonors who we are. Because when we feel that the only option is um, that there's something wrong with us, or we try to do it all ourselves and we fall short, we dishonor the fact that we are God's children, that we are created and wonder fearfully and wonderfully made. But in our bound wills and our stubbornness, in our world that is filled with people just like us, the shame can really be laid on thick. And it can feel um, like something that's ir irredeemable. It's embarrassing. We feel shunned if people would knew. No. I don't know if this is echoing, resonating with any of you. I'm sure it is, though, because... Shame is a commodity that we deal all the time in our world. Um, but in this new year, in this new day, because we do have a daily dying and rising in Christ, Christ comes into your locked room. Christ gets beyond, behind those layers of shame that you are clothed in. And he takes them upon himself as his mantle and gives you his freedom gives you his righteousness. He sees you and says, this is not who you are. You are my child. And yes, all this has happened. Yes, you have done these things or they've been done to you. It's not a denial that they've happened. It's a word. It's a promise. It's an action by God that is so much bigger and so much more defining than the shame that you tend to define yourself with. Because in the end, it is Christ's word that endures, not the shame, not all that we wrap ourselves in. It is thrown aside by Christ and we are given and clothed not in shame, but in his majesty. Once again this year, that majesty, that glory of God will be, um, will envelop you and as God sees you, we, thank, thanks be to God, can see each other this way too, through those eyes of forgiveness and grace of God that the person before me, whether it's in the mirror or next to you or in a conversation, also is a beloved child of God and forgiven by the grace of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. We give thanks for the dawn, the resurrection dawn that brings us um, your righteousness and your blessedness to us and takes away our shame, our burdens and gives us your, your love and your grace. Thank you that that is something that we can um, receive, that we are given, um, that comes unbidden to us when your word finds us. And today, oh Lord, we needed it as we began this new year. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We ask that you um, continue to give us that healing that we need, that you heal um, our minds and our bodies and those of um, in our community that are in the same need, that you forgive and give, the, give us hearts to forgive um, so that that newness of life, that you can create new hearts within us as well. For the gifts of relationship with others, we rejoice and we ask that you um, work in and through our relationships in this new year. For the communion of faith in your church, we rejoice um, and we ask that you um, continue to draw us together, help us to love and respect one another, work together and be um, in mutual conversation and consolation with one another. 
Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for the leaders around our world. We pray for Israel and Palestine, Ukraine and Russia, um, China. We pray for Nicaragua. We pray for countries in Africa and South America. We pray for those who have elected to be serve in so many different ways. For the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we rejoice that you are with them. It feels strange to say rejoice, but there's so much we feel like we cannot do. We give thanks knowing that you are there, even though we don't always see how and when and where your hand is working. We give thanks that we can know that it is. So continue, Lord, to be faithful to who you are for your creation. For all who work for peace and international harmony, we ask that that work continues and that it doesn't seem so impossible. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, um, help us to care for this world that you have given us. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, Lord, we give thanks that you have blessed us in this Christmas season with worship, with um, song, and even with some whimsy. Continue to gather us in into your word. Um, into worship, um, into receiving your grace through word and sacrament. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.